Here we are. We're going to talk about the front functional line. This is going to be a little bit different than um, if you are familiar with anatomy trains and Tom Myers. Um, this is not exactly his front functional line uh, because he, uh, he follows certain rules to decide what can be considered an anatomy train. And I'm not following those rules. I am going um, kind of a, a mixture off of the anatomy trains intelligence as well as kind of um, more commonly accepted kinetic chain uh, awareness. So uh, with that knowledge, we can build a complex movement. So <clears throat> here's what we're after. What we can notice here is that we've got basically a bunch of muscles on the front side of the body. And I've only highlighted one cross section of these muscles. And uh, if I were to build up these other muscles on the opposite side, then what we would have is an X. But let's point out the uh, muscles that we are working with here first. So first we have uh, from bottom to top, we have the tibialis anterior. Uh, this muscle is going to help with ankle stability. Then we have the quadriceps. There are four, quad meaning four, and they are going to help with knee and hip stability. We have the adductors here, and these will help to keep the knee um, in towards the midline and act as an anchor in a complex motion like throwing a ball, swinging an axe, or in yoga like taking a lunge twist. In this case, this gentleman would be taking a lunge twist to his right side. His belly would be turning to the right. His right leg would be forward. Then we have the internal obliques on the right side, uh, which would pull the opposite shoulder forward. And the external obliques on the opposing side, which would turn the same side shoulder forward and the pecs which would help to pull the arm forward if it were carrying a load um, some kind of like i said a bat or um, a ball or something the biceps which are going to help to stabilize the elbow uh, again in a throwing motion and one of the uh, many flexors of the forearm uh, to flex the wrist and that would uh, obviously help to stabilize the hand and whatever it happens to be holding. And this is just a common scenario, right? We have all these muscles, we do a complex movement like throw a ball. In this case, this individual would be left-handed and he would be winding up with his left hand um, to throw the ball. Okay, so the, the, the overall, oops, oops, let me get out of here. Let's go back to, here we go. So what I want you to see in here is that we have a cross section. So from here, got a cross section. And if we had the other side drawn in, we would have this other cross section and it would form this nice X pattern. So that is contralateral movement. So we're using muscles on opposing sides of the body to create a complex movement and they work together. And uh, one side has to relax and that's the side that I don't have the muscles pictured. And the other side has to contract and that's the muscles that I do have the, the muscles pictured. So let's clear all this away and take a quick look at each of these individually. And uh, we're not going to look at literally every single one of these muscles, but a uh, general sense of the idea is um, that the core, you know, when we talk about core, most people are thinking about things that are happening in the lumbo-pelvic hip complex. That's lumbar spine, the lower back, the pelvic, right, the pelvis and the hip joint. Um, this whole complex that uh, kind of is the foundation of our movement. You can think about it going up or down from the hips. It's a very crucial point for movement. So um, we can really focus in on the adductors, which here's adductor magnus and brevis and uh, pectineus. And these muscles form an X with the opposing oblique. Now, if you look closely, you can see that the fibers of the adductors on the right side are running diagonally towards the center of the body. And meanwhile, the fibers of the external oblique on the opposite side, oh look, they are running in the same direction. So these are moving this way and 
the adductors are moving this way, right? You can see all these little fibers. Okay, so that means that they are going to create a complex movement which pulls basically from the outside of the, the right knee in this case all the way up to the uh, left shoulder. So it'll pull these two points, oops, it'll pull this knee and this shoulder towards each other, towards the center, right? And that'll create flexion and rotation and abduction of both of those points. And the, uh, the muscles that are further uh, out that are more towards the extremities like the bicep um, in the arm or the tibialis muscle in the right shin, they will help um, to just kind of stabilize the, the extremities during that movement. So let's take a quick look at um, the function of one of the quadriceps muscles. You've got four. Uh, three of them are visible here. You've got vastus medialis and vastus lateralis, which is the biggest of the quadriceps. And it, that's important for why we want to squat with the knees out, because we're built for lateral loading. Um, and then you've got the uh, rectus femoris here. Now, underneath this, you would have vastus inter, uh, yeah, intermedius. Um, and that's basically we're going to just for this video kind of lump them all into one function um, and I'll actually demonstrate with rectus femoris because rectus femoris does basically everything that the other quads do um, except with the added addition of flexing at the hip. The reason that rectus femoris can affect the hip joint is because it attaches above the hip joint and if a muscle crosses over a joint, then it will move that joint as long as that joint is movable, which the hip is highly movable. So let's look at uh, something that all of the quadriceps share in common, which is knee extension. So when it turns yellow, it will be contracting and it straightens the knee like you were kicking a ball okay, or standing upright and you didn't want your knees to give out from underneath you. The other thing that the rectus femoris does is hip extension. So because it crosses above the hip, it will lift and flex at the knee. So this is how you would pull yourself into a lunge. You have to do this. And that means that this muscle right here is going to be working pretty hard when you're in a lunge, um, one of, of several. The other thing to pay attention to here is that there are many muscles that are flexing at the hip. So the one that's highlighted in this case is rectus femoris. But if I were to highlight sartorius, you could see uh, its role in hip flexion um, or the TFL over here and the um, psoas and iliacus as well. Well. Now, all of these muscles are working in concert to create the movement of hip flexion and create the stability in that movement. Okay, so interesting thing, we're going to move on to the adductor group, which you can actually see um, from the back pretty well. Now, this is adductor magnus um, that we're looking at, this big one right here. And it's a very interesting muscle because you can see that some of its fibers connect behind, like posterior to where it, ins uh, where it inserts on the femur, you can see that it would actually end up pulling the leg back. So it would pull it back into extension. But some of the other fibers connect anterior to um, where it connects to the femur, which means that it will create flexion. So the same muscle can create both, let's show flexion, because what, that's what we're talking about right now, which is a lunge. So it'll help to flex, all right? So it's working alongside these bigger muscles, which are all flexing the hip, okay? And, uh, but it can also create extension. So you can do like adductor assisted backbends where you squeeze the knees together in a backbend and, and that'll help to synergize here. So interesting group of muscles. Um, the other adductors uh, don't really, uh, they're not such a Swiss army knife, but you've got again, um, brevis and pectineus. Whoops, pectineus, right there, okay. Now, the other thing that's going to create flexion here, not necessarily at the hip joint, but through the lower back, which um, is going to help us to pull forward into the um, lunge, is this external oblique. So the external oblique moves the same side shoulder 
forward. So let's take a look at that. If we were looking for rotation, it's going to pull your left shoulder forward in this case. So it flexes, it pulls the left shoulder forward. Okay. And it relaxes and you turn back to neutral. So that means, and you can see here that the internal oblique on the opposite side is actually going to help do the exact same thing. The opposite side, uh, the internal and external obliques work together. So same thing, we're going to look at rotation from the internal oblique on this side, and let's fade all the other muscles around it because it's uh, not the most superficial muscle. And you can see that when it contracts, it also pulls, in this case, the opposite side shoulder forward. Okay, so it's deep inside the belly there. And uh, both of these muscles are going to work in concert to create trunk rotation, which is really important that you use your obliques in, um, in a twist like that rather than just using leverage. So in uh, addition to this, we are going to have um, – we actually – in the case of a, a lunge, we don't really want to squeeze the pecs too much because then your shoulders will come forward. Um, so you actually want some engagement on the muscles on the back side of the body, which we're not going to get into. But I just want you to see how this same movement, basically the, the left pec in this case, is going to um, bring the left shoulder forward. So let's see where that is. Okay. I think this is what we're yeah so if it's out it's going to help you to bring that elbow forward so that you can put your hands in front of your heart in a prayer position and then the serratus anterior back here which is going to be a very important muscle for so many reasons but you can see that the fibers of serratus anterior run exactly um, parallel to the muscles of the external oblique. And that's going to help to stabilize the scapula, your shoulder blade, onto uh, the rib cage here. Going to make sure that you don't wing your scapula out um, and that you have stability through the shoulder um, here in a twist uh, and in tons of other poses. Very, very important muscle, this one, the serratus anterior. Called serratus, right, because it's serrated like a uh, saw blade here. Okie doke. So, um, and we'll just, here, I'll might as well show a video quickly. So that pulls your shoulder forward. So that's going to be really important for um, anytime you want to be on your hands, uh, push-ups and things like that. But that's a little outside of what we're talking about now. So this is basically the front functional line. Um, oh, as well as the, um, I forgot to mention because it's hidden here, let me hide the obliques. So you've got rectus abdominis as well. This is your six pack and uh, it is going to help to flex at the trunk as well. So I'm uh, going to help to pull the, the chest forward. But in a lunge, we don't really want too much of that. We want a nice long spine. So it's more about the rotation through the obliques, the um, synergy through the adductors, pulling the knee towards the midline um, than it is uh, the other side. Okay, so. Again, this is the front functional line, uh, at least my version of it, and I hope that is helpful and that you can see that when you combine all of these muscles together, you've got a very big uh, movement uh, across the entire body that is functional and com complicated, and, um, and I hope you can see how these muscles work together to do that. Okie doke. That's enough. Thank you.